Welcome traders to another Tickmill Weekly Market Outlook for week commencing the 20th of June with me Patrick Monday. In terms of the US next week, uh, on Monday markets are closed for Juneteenth, National Independence Day. Uh, the focus then is going to shift towards housing and related markets which are left vulnerable really after the Fed policy announcements. With the Federal Reserve signalling it has a strong stomach for the fight against inflation, uh, we can expect further significant interest rate hikes in coming months. But by going harder and faster into restrictive territory, there is a greater risk of a hard landing and a potential recession. The housing market is particularly vulnerable given prices are up nearly 40% nationally since the start of the pandemic due to stimulus fuel demand vastly outstripping the limited supply of properties for sale. Now that mortgage rates have surged higher and consumer confidence has plunged, it's, uh, it's really starting to see demand weaken and supply rise. The number of new home sales plunged 16.6% in April and markets are anticipating that if there is any rebound in May, uh, that existing home sales are measured when the keys are received rather than when the contracts are signed as for new home sales. So expect to see a big drop in May's existing home sales print. Uh, this is a worrying as residential construction accounts for more than 2% of economic output, while housing transactions also correlate strongly with spending on furniture, home furnishing, uh, home furnitures and electronics. So from a technical perspective, what does that leave us in terms of the dollar index? Well, we came just shy of that 106 target that we're looking for as a minimum upside uh, technical target versus the potential way for uh, consolidation. So we are looking now at the potential to hold here above the 103 handle. If we do, we're looking for price to extend to the upside, test into that 106.20s. We've got some nice momentum divergence developing. And so watching there for bearish reversal patterns to potentially engage on the short side looking for a correction at a minimum down back into the potential wave for low there at 10130 s Now, alternatively, if we take out uh, the lows at the 103 there, then I'd be looking for a break of trend line support down through 10240s and a potential then to extend down to uh, at least test back into the uh, 100 level and the 9930s there, that prior double top for the upside extension. Then we have trend channel support back to 98.60. So really going to be pivotal to see if we can hold those 103.20s uh, as we head into next week. Moving to the Eurozone, uh, voters head to the polls today, Sunday, for legislative elections in France. Observers believe President Emmanuel Macron's parliamentary majority could be under threat and we have really hot temperatures across Europe and that may impact turnout. In terms of data, really the focus is going to be on Thursday. Uh, Eurozone PMI's expectations are for the June manufacturing metric to fall to 54.1 from 54.6. Services are also anticipated in decline from 55.5 to 56.1, leaving the composite at 54.1 versus the 54.8, uh, which printed in May. Uh, it's also important the May release sort did see a down tick in terms of the composite metric, but ultimately remaining in expansionary territory with the survey stating that the driving force for the expansion was the dominant services sector as ongoing supply side disruptions, the war in Ukraine and subdued demand for goods restrained the manufacturing output growth. This time we are looking for a a release that will show higher costs are starting to hurt the cyclical manufacturing industry. As energy prices continue their relentless surge, pick up in services as consumers rotate their spending to services and away from goods as the economies continue to reopen. This is also why market watchers expect the services sector to remain robust despite the increasing economic headwinds. So from a technical perspective, the euro dollar uh, put in a potential a double bottom last week into those 10350s. We did see some uh, demand come into the market. Uh, daily VWAPs have flipped uh, bullish, but however, momentum remains negative at this stage. So the key as we head into this week is going to be any test into this 10650s, the trend channel resistance. If we get bearish reversal patterns there, I'll be looking to re-engage on the short side, looking for a minimum test of the 10220s uh, versus that last corrective phase. 
Now, the alternative scenario is that we see increased uh, bids come into the market and take out this trend channel resistance. So any move through that 106.70s to engage on the long side, looking then for a test of monthly projected range resistance just below 108. And then we could also start to think about a target up into the trend channel resistance coming in uh, 10.40s. So really going to be key to see how we respond at that 106.50 for the euro this week. Heading to the UK, uh, quite a bit of data out this week. Uh, starts midweek, Wednesday, with UK inflation expectations are for a year-over-year -year CPI print for May to tick higher to 9.1% from 9% last time out, whilst the core metric is C remaining at 6.2%. The jump in the April print from 7 to 9% was predominantly a byproduct of the increase in off-gen price cap, a phenomenon which will not be repeated in May's release. This time around, look for, for an unchanged headline rate of 9%. And this suggests that food and energy will likely continue to place upward pressure on prices. However, this could be moderated this time around by clothing and footwear, given the surge seen in May. Then we head to Thursday. We get UK PMIs. And they're expecting the metric to decline for, to 53 from the last 53.4% for manufacturing. Uh, tick lower to 54.2 uh, from 54.6. The May report saw a notable decline in the headline composite metric and made a chunky drop in the services print, which actually fell from 58.9 to 53.4, with S&P Global noting that last round of input cost inflation was the steepest since the index began in 1996, while the monthly loss of momentum for business activity expansion was a survey record outside of the lockdown periods. Uh, that said, analysts expect a more modest decline in the composite release to 52.7 from 53.1. It's also uh, noteworthy that the recent messaging from the PMIs appears to contradict the outcome of the April GDP print, and therefore any optimism in the upcoming release might be questioned by market participants. Then we round out the week on Friday with UK retail sales, expectations are for headline month on month retail sales to fall 1% uh, versus the 1.4% increase seen uh, in the prior report, whilst the core metric is expected to decline to 0.2% versus the prior 1.4%. Uh, the upcoming release will follow the April report, which saw an unprecedented expansion for headline and core month-over-month -month metrics after two consecutive months of decline. From a technical perspective, uh, Sterling tested that long-awaited target we've been looking for, that 120 test traded down as low as uh, 119.35 before we saw decent demand coming into the market. And we uh, got the daily VWAP flip bullish heading into Thursday, but Friday, uh, saw some weakness develop, and we're back now testing pivotal support here, 121.50s. This is going to be the line in the sand this week for the bull bear uh, scenario for me. If we can hold this 120.50s, then I look for an extension up into uh, the 126.50s through that trend line resistance. That's going to be a key test as well, 124.75. Keep an eye on that. Uh, if we don't uh, maintain the 121.50s as support, then we look for a move back down to retest prior uh, swing lows and ultimately extend down into uh, trend channel, uh, descending trend channel support down uh, below 118 on the downside. So key to see how we respond at the 121.50s this week for Sterling. In Japan, uh, pretty light data calendar, only one release of note really. That's Thursday's uh, CPI print. Consensus is year over year core nationwide 2.1% versus the prior 2.1%. Consumer price inflation likely stayed unchanged at 2.5% in May for two straight months. The government's expanded fuel subsidy program continues to offset movements in buy crude prices. Uh, the meanwhile, obviously, the key is the Bank of Japan's uh, preferred measure of core inflation, excluding Fresh food and energy likely edged up to 0.9% year over year last month from a 0.8% in the prior month. And obviously, Bank of Japan out on Friday, uh, released on Friday their uh, interest rate decision. They are just flooding the market uh, with liquidity. Ultra loose monetary policy there compared to all the uh, major economies in terms of the, the central banks looking to tighten uh, financial conditions. So, from a technical perspective, the dollar yen tested back into that. 
131.40s, which we were looking for last week, and we saw decent demand coming out on Friday post that BOJ decision. So what I'm looking for now is a move back through 135.40s, and we have a target there, 136.77 and 138.16 in extension. So those are the minimum upside objectives for this move. At this stage, it would take a close back through uh, 131.10, to suggest we have a more meaningful high in place, uh, that stage we'll be looking for a move back down to test support to the 126.50s. But for now, it uh, looks like we have a bullish setup and we're looking for a new cycle highs as we head into the new trading week. And we're rounding things out down under in Australia. The only uh, real release of note this week is going to be the uh, Tuesday's RBA minutes. Uh, the minutes from the June meeting, where the central bank hiked rates by 50 basis points to 0.85%. Um, remember the expectation there was just for a 25 basis points increase. And note that inflation in Australia has increased significantly while it reiterated its commitment to doing what is necessary to ensure that inflation returns to target over time. The RBA also stated that inflation is likely to be higher than expected a month ago and that the board expects to take further steps in normalizing monetary conditions over the months ahead, with the size and timing of future interest rates increases to be guided by incoming data and the assessment of the outlook for inflation and the labour market. Furthermore, note whether the Australian economy appears resilient, although uh, sources suggest that uncertainty about the outlook is how household spending evolves, given the increasing pressure on finances from higher inflation. So from a technical perspective, the Aussie dollar we are still looking for an equality objective, 66.40 on the downside versus the swing high here at 76.60. Uh, rejected from uh, the 70.60 area this week. So I'm looking now for follow through back through the price cycle lows here, 68.20s. Want to be on the short side, targeting that equality objective, 66.40s. At this stage, we really need to see a break of the trend line resistance and a high volume node here towards the 72 handle to suggest we have a more meaningful low in place and then we can start to think about range resistance back up into the 75 40s. And that concludes the weekly market outlook for a week commencing the 20th of June. As always, traders, plan the trade, trade the plan, and most importantly, manage your risk. Until next week, thanks very much.